This is the recipe. It's like the dough to rule them all. <laughs> okay. everybody welcome to another day at North and South um, today I'm gonna do my most in-depth video on bread making I have made videos in the past where I mention some of the things or I show some of the things but today is gonna be a, de a video dedicated entirely to how I make bread and first of all this when I make bread I make five loaves at a time five good sized loaves in another video in the future I will definitely show about making a smaller batch of bread without a mixer. But for today's purposes, I'm gonna show you how I do it. We have a large family, we have nine kids. Not all of them are living at home still. Some have already flown the coop, but we still make and eat a lot of bread. Yes, and right. so I'm gonna show you today how I make it. I'm gonna go through a lot of those things. And even though you may not be making five loaves of bread and you may not have a mixer, the principles of bread making apply across the board. And so you can still, I think, hopefully gain a lot from this video. And also, um, I'm gonna not just make loaves of bread today. With the same dough that I use to make five loaves of bread, sometimes I will not actually make five loaves. I'll make a fewer amount of loaves and we'll use that same dough for making um, rolls, pizza dough, cinnamon rolls or sweet breads, things along those lines. So. Or even some especially breads like the pot. We have a pesto bread you use sometimes. Yeah. Although that yeah. is a loaf of bread. But yeah. So I'm going to show it. you that this is a very basic dough, and uh, it's a really really yummy dough, and you can use it for a lot of purposes. So even if you're like I don't, I, we wouldn't be able to eat five loaves of bread. I bet you could have two loaves of bread, and rolls with dinner one night, or a you know some sweet rolls, or a pizza, homemade pizza another night. So I think that. Um, that this actually probably would work for a lot of families. That being said, I'm gonna go through everything that I use and you need for this recipe. Okay. Number one. <laughs> there it goes. It's like a choo-choo train. You need flour. <laughs> um, I used an unbleached all-purpose. I am using a white flour. I have a, a whole wheat recipe that I also developed, but we don't eat it much anymore. Um, I will show that in another video, my whole wheat recipe. This is for a white bread. So I use King Arthur's, it's great. It's got a good protein level and it's unbleached. I use whole milk, any milk will do, but we just like whole milk around here. Something new that I've added to the recipe is eggs. Um, I didn't used to have eggs in my bread and you can actually just take these eggs right out if you have an egg allergy um, or just have a different preference. But adding the eggs in has made the bread a slightly denser and richer and it has a better flavor and uh, I just prefer it. I think it's better. Uh, we're going to be using honey. You could mm -hmm. use sugar. You could use agave. I've used those as well, but I feel like the flavor is best with sugar. Butter, instant yeast. This comes out of my freezer. I buy it in a big pack and then put it in the freezer and salt. Those are all the ingredients. It's pretty basic, but other things that you will need to make it easier is a mixer. Mixing, hand kneading five loaves of bread, which would be quite the workout. This is our Bosch, yeah. it's awesome. Um, I think a Bosch is best, but you can use a KitchenAid. I've just heard stories about KitchenAids, really the en the motor's burning out when you have too much bread in there, it's kneading. A Bosch is a workhorse. We had our Bosch for 20 years before I ruined it. You ruined it making something that wasn't bread, but yeah, that's a whole nother story. Trying to make paper clay in it. And it. <laughs> Another thing that you're gonna use if, is a kitchen scale. You don't need this, but this makes it so that you don't have one giant loaf and one tiny loaf. Because mm. time and time again, I think I can tell how much dough when I'm separating it out, but it's really hard to. And especially if you're gonna be making rolls, because then you could just have a consistent size roll right. by weighing it. Yeah, that's true. Um, it's, then, eyeballing it's harder than you think. Yeah, so then we've got, you know, Measuring, measuring stuff? stuff, simple as that. This is my recipe um, and it is mine. I started with another recipe and I've just slowly over the years changed some things to get it where I want it. It is available at our website, northbandsouth.com. 
We'll put a link in the description as well. Yes, and it makes a really moist, really yummy bread. So the first thing you're gonna do is make what we call a paste. Um, and the paste is kind of like you're taking all the ingredients and then you're gonna let them sit for a while. And this is where your bread's gonna go from okay to really tasty, because this is where the flavor develops. Um, the longer a bread takes, the more flavor it's gonna have. So um, this is how we add a, infuse a lot of flavor. So I start with my whole milk and I'm gonna pour in three cups in my old measuring cup. I know, it's all, it's kind of fading. It yeah. might be time for new. From a Pyrex. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so I do three cups and you can do this on the stove top if you're not a microwave person, but, and then we're going to do one and a half sticks of butter, which is three quarters cup of butter. And I just throw it in here with my milk. The oh. thing about bread, I actually went to a bread making course about 15 years ago. Hey, you know what? In the cool cooking videos, they have all this stuff already unwrapped and ready to go. Did you know that? <laughs> This isn't uh, Joanna Gaines doing her thing. Um, yeah, I went to a cooking, a bread making class with a, a chef like 15 years ago. One of the things I, I could not get my bread Were they for. a chef or were they a baker? I think you're right, it's probably a baker. Yeah, okay. Pastry chef maybe, I don't know. I could not get my bread to work. Every time I made it, it was like this thick. Do you remember? Yes, I, I do. Follow the recipe, follow the recipe that everybody else was using and I didn't know why. And it was the temperature of the liquid Mm. That was getting me because when it says warm, I'm thinking warm is like, you know, not just barely. Tepid. Yeah. Yeah, just a little bit. Before I go on to tell you about that, I'm going to put my milk in the microwave with my butter and I'm going to put it in for about four and a half minutes. That's going to make it really hot. Yeast needs to be around, it grows bad. I mean, yeast can grow at cooler temperatures, it just takes longer, but we want it to not go over 100 degrees. That milk is going to come out of the microwave way above 100 degrees. And so that's where I was getting confused because I'm trying to make my water in the 90s, right? And But the problem is your flour, your honey, your yeast, mm. your salt, everything else is much cooler. So it's cooling off. And so it's cooling off. You really want it in the upper 90s. Mm. Um, and so when you're getting water out of the tap or heating up your milk, you want it really warm. So that once it's all mixed together and then it's starting to proof, then it's the the dough is nice and warm. So what that baker taught me that day, and it everything changed after that, is that the water should be hot, like where you're almost just before you want to pull your hands out. Mm. That's how hot the water needs to be. What I'm going to do: two tablespoons of yeast. I'm going to put it in here. Mm -hmm. And I am going to. Start adding my flour. Now I keep my flour in a bucket. Yeah, these are great. And I'm gonna start mixing it together with the flour so that when I do pour in the hot liquid, it doesn't bother it. Now, one of the cool things about using a Bosch or a mixer like this, and probably just you would get used to it, is you don't have to be so tied to how many. You're using somewhere between 13 and 16 cups of flour. And if you Total. are- the type of baker that Mike is, you might be frustrated by that. Like, how many? <laughs> I know, I need you to tell me exactly. But the reason it changes is because humidity levels change in your home or based on where you live. So you're actually gonna follow how the dough looks and feels rather than a specific number. So I'm just gonna mix this together. Okay. Um, and then I'm gonna start adding the rest of the ingredients. Another thing I do, and I don't know if it's necessary, I don't add salt at this point. Most people do add their salt right then, but I hold off until after this is proofed so that mm. it's just like, I just feel like I'm letting it be, like nothing's getting in the way of it growing and developing that yeast. really yummy flavor. It's got a bloom, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, my butter and milk are done, and I'm gonna mix these in with this flour. Ooh, well it looks like there's a, there are a couple of chunks there. Yeah, it's okay. Okay. Then I'll get mixed in. In fact, one time I actually did the extra step of adding the butter later, only softened, and it did make the bread even better, but that's a lot of work. <laughs> um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna get our water. Another little trick for my Thank honey you. is in my measuring cup. Well, that was three cups of water, by the way. 
Three cups of milk, three cups of water. Equal, equal. Three quarters cups of butter or fat of some sort. Three quarter cups of sweetener. Um, I sprayed this measuring cup before so that the, bunny, the honey just slides out because honey is quite sticky. We usually have a bigger honey container, but got the smaller yeah. stuff this time from Costco. It was cheaper. We are going to make, like I said, a little paste. And then we're going to step away from the paste. Oh, right. Oh, you guys, I forgot something. A couple of months ago, I wanted to make donuts. And I had made donuts with this flour, this dough before. So you can do that. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to be making it into the shape of a donut and deep frying in it. But I read about milk bread, which is a Japanese thing. And I'm like, oh, do I make milk bread? Because my bread has milk in it and butter, which are the main things. But what I read was milk bread also has eggs in it. Mm. And so I thought, I wonder what would happen if I added eggs to my bread. And so at first I added, I think just two eggs, but now I've taken it up to five. I, if you go too many, it gets too dense. I think for donuts sake, you could do more eggs. But since I want a, like a dough that's like just an all around, you know, versatile dough, and I don't want it just for donuts, I, um, five is a good number. So, so five gonna, eggs. Yep, five so eggs. So if you're allergic to eggs. You can totally leave this out because I just started adding this a few months ago. Right. Um, I mean, obviously it adds a little bit of protein. protein? Yep. There's already protein in flour, but it does add a little bit more. And also, I remember when we used to keep chickens, we were like desperate to find ways to use our <laughs> eggs. So this is helpful too. And we keep, we're having chickens again, so. We're gonna have more Just gonna eggs. add these five eggs in. And I'm just gonna use the M on my mixer. So that's. Just this. I'm just do a little M. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, so now I've got this, like it looks like a paste. And I'm gonna put the lid on. Oh yeah, the little lid thing. Just to keep the moisture and the warmth in there. And I have my little tea towel that I always use when I make the bread. I just like to think of my dough. It's already like, getting like kind of steamy. Like little baby that I try to keep warm. <laughs> and I'm gonna set the timer for 30 minutes. You can do it for as little as 15, but it is a noticeable difference in flavor when you go to 30. Right, it tastes, so it tastes a lot more better. yeasty. Okay, so we're gonna let that sit for a half hour. You can go and do something else like watch an open self video during that time, but you do wanna get a few things out to be ready. Um, you're gonna be adding a lot more flour and we're gonna be adding the salt in the next step. But really quickly, you're gonna be ready for getting it in the pans. This recipe does not require a double rise time. You're not letting it rise in a bowl, punching it down and then putting mm. it in the pans. It's going right from the kneading process because the Bosch does such an amazing job with it into the bread pans and only rises once. So while that's doing that, it's good to kind of maybe clean up your station because you're gonna be using your, your counter for the dividing into the loaves and getting out your bread pans. My 30 minute timer is up. Can you guys see my paste here? It's got some bubbles coming up. It's risen and grown. Mm-hmm. You kind of knock it down a little mm -hmm. bit. So now we're gonna start. Don't mind the kids running through. I'm gonna add my salt. I do two tablespoons of salt, two tablespoons of yeast, right? Easy measurements to remember so you don't have to look at your recipe all the time. I'm gonna start the mixer. Okay. So you're, it's gonna be a little harder to hear me. Okay. It's gonna be going. You know, there we go. So I have my mixer on one right now. That's the lowest speed for this mixer. The motor starts to... See that? The sound has changed. Uh -huh. When it does that, I put it on a two. The next speed up. Okay. Now my, my mixer, the Bosch, has four speeds. So just, I don't know what your mixer speeds are, but I just keep it at a two. And I start adding the flour. And this is where the mixer is awesome, or just knowledge of your dough, instead of being married to the numbers. Right now, if you look inside,
see on video. But that's what we're looking for. Another thing that I was taught in that class from that Brett Baker, it seems like you might be like, I don't know if it's doing anything. It doesn't look like it's really. But she said they, she went, she went to a course where they put ping pong balls in there and just watched the ping pong balls moving through the dough. This oh. dough is kneading and getting mixed and moving together. So. And it's okay if it's like over the top of the, the middle thing. It's yeah. not a big deal. It's actually pulling that back down. That's in. actually kind of designed that way, right? Yeah, so with my white bread, I do it five to six minutes. With my wheat bread, though, I do it longer, up to 15 minutes to really develop the elasticity of that dough. Okay. Whew. Man. Something else we're gonna do. We're gonna make three loaves of bread, some rolls, and some pizza dough, just so I can show you guys. Oh boy. Um, and maybe one of these roll loaves will do something special in. So just spray your bread pans. Now, my bread pans are nine by five, and that matters because if you had the eight inch bread pans, you could probably do six loaves. Okay. Um, and then you got thing. these, you got these from Target, right? Yeah, these are Target. They've been great. I've Easy to find, years. they've been really good. Um, and then I'm gonna spray the bowl because it just makes it easier for me. We are going to turn on our, look at how good. First, we're gonna push the batteries in on our food scale. <laughs> that scale is a, the thing. Has a broken, oh no. <laughs> Come on. Do you need new batteries? Come on, baby. <laughs> oh, there it is. Okay, and then we're gonna put the bowl on and zero it out. Put it on grams. Okay, I better, I'll better. i come over here. Put it on grams instead of, we don't want on ounces, we want on grams. Uh huh. Here we go. Here we go. That's oh beautiful boy. dough. This is where I really feel like it's a baby. It's so warm. <laughs> smells good. I'm gonna pull out my dough hook. <laughs> so I'm gonna take this. I'm gonna work it in here. It smells so good and it's so warm. I'm just gonna push it out with my hands. You don't, you know, obviously it's slightly sticky. You don't want it so sticky. If it's that, I mean, it's not gonna ruin the bread if it's super sticky, but it, it it's just gonna be a better quality dough or, you know, end product. If it, it's not overly sticky. You don't consider this overly sticky? No. I could be, I could have gone up, just probably added another half cup if I wanted, but okay. you don't want to dry it out either. If I could just get it to 5,000, that would make my life a lot easier. 5,000. Come you on. Almost, you do have a little bit more. Oh, look. Oh, I'm going with it. That's 5,000. This number is what you're going to divide by five, whatever it ends up being. And that is the weight of one loaf. So just throw some flour down on your counter and pour your beautiful dough out onto it. And because we greased this bowl, comes right on out. to zero. And you can use a dough cutter. Don't or, mind that drawer. Oh yeah. <laughs> you can use a dough cutter or you can just pinch with your hand. That's where you go and you pinch. Pinch it off. And you're gonna add that until you get to 1,000. That's why I wanted to get it to 5,000. That's a lot easier to divide by five. You you did better math this time than when we did our um yeah. our planner boxes. Yep. So this just gives you really uniform little loaves. Oh. Almost there. It's really oh. really close. Oh. That's actually close enough. This is my dough, right? That I've just that's I your dough, right? Have a little bit of flour Let me on the move counter. Over. Let me move over here. Okay. This is a better angle. We have a little bit of flour on the counter. And I'm gonna take it, and I'm just gonna start folding it over on itself like this, gently, gently, so that it doesn't stick to your hands too much. And I'm gonna pinch it together. I'm gonna just have a little bit more flour on the counter, so we don't get it to do that. I feel this is where I'm treating it like a little baby, or oh, like I've just. Wrapped it up like a little baby. I feel such such good feelings. And then I just lay it and I always feel bad for the baby. Because <laughs> his hand's so cold. And they have to go sleep in. <laughs> okay, and then so we're gonna do three. We're gonna do one more loaf like that, and then I'm gonna show you how you could do a specialty loaf. Okay. Oh yeah. Whoa! It 
is possible to be perfect sometimes. I'm perfect. At things. Okay, this is our specialty loaf. This is where if you, let's say you're having a yummy soup. And this is a great thing about bread. Bread's cheap. And it takes a, you know, a bowl of soup, but when you add homemade bread to it, now it's a special meal. Totally. If you want to make it extra special, you can make a specialty loaf. So, what's this one going to be? I don't know. What should we do? Let's okay. do. We should have thought ahead stuff. about this, probably. Yeah, probably. Okay. Mike joked that I should that he was like surprised that I didn't have a plan, but I think that's what's cool about it is you just look at what you've got. And what am I looking for right now? I'm looking at what I've got. Mm. I'm looking for some garlic powder. I got that in there somewhere. Garlic. I didn't even know I was gonna show you how to do these, but this is great because you can do any flavor you want. This could be a cinnamon and sugar loaf. This is also kind of the basics of how you would do a cinnamon roll, but you would cut it instead mm. of putting it into a loaf. Mm -hmm. So I'm just gonna put this loaf here and I'm gonna roll it out. Keeping in mind the size of my, my pan, right? Because mm -hmm. I wanted about this, that thickness, or that height, I guess. Whatever. Let's say you're having soup and you have some extra pesto. That was kind of one of our favorite things to do is you just slather this with pesto. Or if you wanted it for a dessert, you throw some cinnamon and brown sugar and butter and maybe pecans in there. Um, or just whatever you can come up with. Yeah, really anything. So I'm going to take my semi melted butter and make a garlic parmesan bread. Now, if I had fresh garlic, which I don't, I just ran out, need to get some, I would just add it to this butter and brush it on, and that would be super yummy. Since I don't have it, most of us have some garlic powder or garlic salt. Garlic powder thing's better. The other stuff is salty. I'm gonna add okay. a little salt. You could do this with olive oil. You could do it really. I mean, that's it's, this is just a basic that you can just put something inside of your bread once you've rolled it out. You could do this with a cheddar, olives. Oh, look, I haven't used this yet. So the Parmesan. Costco Parmesan yeah. is the best. Now at that bread making class, she taught us a trick there. If you've ever tried to make cinnamon rolls or any sort of rolled treat with dough, sometimes you just roll it up and you only get one mm. swirl. Mm -hmm. If you follow this trick though, you'll get um, prettier swirl in the middle. So what you're gonna do is, while you roll, I'm gonna press this down a little bit. Let me add it even more. You can never have too much cheese. That's right. Press this down a little bit into the dough, and then I'm gonna lift and kind of push it in. Is can you tell what I'm doing there? You're almost like stretching it a little bit yeah. back, and then pushing in the sides so it. Mm hmm. I'm gonna do something to the sides at the end. Okay. I don't usually have it this long. You really went for it on this one. Mm -hmm. So then I wanna pinch the sides together a little bit so that all of my insides don't just leak out. Oh, you don't wanna lose it. Too much. So I just kind of pinch that up, pinch the dough together to mm -hmm. seal it. You could do that like a pizza roll, that would be cool, right? With sauce and cheese and pepperoni. All sorts it's kind of like stuff. a cow zone. So then I have my other underside. I'm going to try pinching that together a little bit so it doesn't leak out. It's not the end of the world if it leaks out. It's just not quite as pretty. Mm. And then I lay it, the seam side down into the pan. And I'm going to brush it with a little bit more butter. And... A little bit more Parmesan, so I know what oh, it is. that's gonna be good. So, once you get your dough into the pan, you're gonna let it rise 
for, you're gonna set a timer for 30 minutes, but that's not all the time. So set a timer for 30 minutes. Now we're gonna do rolls. I have a baking sheet that I used that melted butter on, and we're mm -hmm. gonna make, we're just gonna fill it and see what we have left and we'll use that for pizza dough. So I like my rolls about 80 grams. If you like smaller rolls, you can go smaller, bigger, bigger, obviously, but I'm just gonna put a bowl on here. Look at a that. A roll. Bowl. Bowl. And a, a bowl on a bowl. So then I have Bam. this dough and I just, I'm gonna be turning it inside out and shoving it in. Why do you do that? Is there a reason? So it's got a nice pretty oh, I see. pop and then I'm pinching it together and I'm throwing it down on there. Throwing it down. Throwing it down. Okay. We'll come back when you got all those on there. There is a life I lead in this city. Hurry in to cup my tea. I can take what I need to get by. It doesn't make it easy. The other piece of my heart moves slow. Somewhere in the great unknown. When I return from the afterglow Will you carry me like I am whole again? Wait. Now I would spray some plastic wrap and put that over with a towel. This is what we have left, which is about 387 grams. For a large round pizza, you want about 250 to 275 grams. So I'm going to not use this tonight. So I'm going to take this dough and I'm going to put it in a baggie and I'm going to suspend it in the fridge. And tomorrow, or the next day, pull it out and make some pizza. So our 30 minute timer just went off. The bread is not ready to go in. I want my bread to rise higher than this. I like it to be a little bit above the top of the pan. Mm -hmm. But the 30 minutes is for when I start my oven. So that you don't get it ready to go in and then you have to preheat your oven. Okay. Some ovens might preheat really quickly and some take longer. But this just gives me about the right window. You know, it takes 10 to 15 minutes for when it is ready. Also, it depends. Some days are cooler in your house. Some days mm. are a lot warmer. And so you just have to watch your bread and see when it's ready to go in. So then how long do you wait now? So, so now, at this point, you're just kind of watching I'm just it. getting the oven on. Now I'm just watching the bread. So you when that beeps and says it's ready, I check on the bread again and see if the bread's ready. And if it's not, I give it 10 more minutes. Or Okay, more so minutes. at this point, you're just sort of watching it, not based on timer, but more on how it looks. Yeah. And I think you like to see it start to push up on the... I like to see the... Once I know, I'm starting to see the bread. Cloth. Yeah. The oven finished preheating a few minutes ago. The bread is just starting to poke. You can take, it, it's not like, there's a there's a window. It could get a little higher than this. Okay. But this is high enough. So I'm gonna put it in. Mm -hmm. And I wish in this rental house that we're in that I had double ovens. But alas, I do not. Next house. Next house will have double ovens, full size ovens, because then I could just put the rolls in too. When you do five loaves, you put you put two across the front yeah, too, yeah, right? Yeah, I put one here and one here. Okay. So I cook this for about 28 minutes these days. Uh, a lot of recipes say 30. 28 seems to be about right for for me and my bread. Perfect. Okay. It's done. Bread is done. Let's see. Whoa. Is that the special one? No, it isn't. Nope. I'm excited about the special one. Oh yeah, you're right. Delicious. That does look special. Now I gotta hurry to get these rolls in. These will cook more like 15 to 20 minutes. Okay. You don't want to, they need to get out of the pan. So you put your dry, your cooling racks, and I just slide them onto their sides. Mm -hmm. Why don't you put them on your bottom? I think because it preserves their shape a little bit better. That, like kind of deflate or yeah. whatever. Keep them tall. Okay. There you go. Hey, nice. While the rolls are in the oven, I'm making a quick uh, like pasta sauce out of cream and Parmesan and garlic. Mike went to the store for me. Mm -hmm. And some mushrooms that I needed to use. Um, I am planning on pretty soon doing a video on making sauces. Because if you know how to make sauces, you can really save a lot of money on your grocery bill. And you can make anything taste good. And we're, what we're going to use is if you guys watched our a Costco haul that was about getting kind of cheap food at Costco. 
we got these uh, chicken thighs, and we have them in the pressure cooker right now that we'll shred and put over pasta with this sauce. It'll be yep. super yummy. And we are basically getting ready for dinner, so we've got lots of activity in here, right? Now. Rolls are done. Yep. I meant to brush them with butter before, which would have made them a little softer. They're done for about 18, 19 minutes, if you were wondering. Nice. Now I will just transfer those to the cooling rack. Sweet. So this is the recipe. It's like the dough to rule them all. <laughs> you can make donuts, which we've done, rolls, breads, sweet breads, cinnamon rolls, pizza dough. It's an awesome dough. Remember, you can take out the eggs or not. Um, it just makes it have a little bit more richness, flavor, a little bit more moist. So thanks for coming along. Come back again. I'll show you how to make a simpler bread that you can just knead with your hands. And we'll do another where I show you how to make basic sauces so then you can just do all sorts of yummy foods at home. Thanks for coming along, guys. Head over to NorpenSouth.com for the recipe for this. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. See you later. Bye.